1440p quickly seems to be the new 1080p in terms of the most popular resolution people choose for both veteran gamers and newcomers. If you play competitive FPS games, 1440p is a good balance between both reliability for frame rates as well as performance, and for just about any other game, 1440p strikes that perfect balance between resolution and price point. Now KTC sent me out this budget 1440p 240Hz monitor for review, so I figured I would take this opportunity to talk about 1440p and why we're at the point where it's replacing 1080p almost entirely. This monitor, for example, is the H27E22S, which is a 1440p 240Hz gaming monitor, which is currently 230 bucks at the time of making this video. Now, considering even three to four years ago, a 1440p monitor with this spec list would have run upwards of 400 to maybe even $800 or even more. Comparatively, at that time, the barrier to entry on 1080p lineups were incredibly affordable, ranging somewhere between 100 to 250 bucks at the entry point. And fast forward to today, we're at that same price point for 1440p. I also won't really pretend like the 1080p price point isn't even lower today because it is, but the gap in price for 1440p is way lower now than ever before. Since then, at least, monitors like this one showcase how much more affordable 1440p has become, making this the perfect entry point for just about any gamer. That isn't to say there aren't more expensive 1440 displays either, because those certainly exist. Of course, you have those new OLED panel 1440p monitors and displays pushing upwards of 480Hz, but those do range anywhere between $800 to even $1200 or more. What drives the price down on these new 1440p displays popping up would have to be the panels driving them. With improvements to both technology and supply chains, a slew of new VA, HVA, and IPS panels are hitting the market now, which really do help drive these prices downwards. On this monitor, for example, this does have an HVA panel, which is essentially an improved upon normal VA panel, which does give a better viewing angle experience alongside faster response times. Will this be better than IPS? That sort of depends on what monitor you're comparing this one to. However, at the price point and the entry to 1440p, this is beyond more than adequate. Now, as somebody who's gamed a ton on 1080p, 1440p is actually a massive jump in resolution, offering about 78% more pixels while still also being able to be driven incredibly well by older hardware, and obviously even more so by modern hardware. From an entry level standpoint, yes, 1080p will still give you a great experience, but 1440p is simply becoming so affordable for what you're getting. Resolution aside as well, if you did want to factor in just the PPI of your display, a 27 inch 1440p monitor like this one gives you about a PPI of 109, which strikes that perfect balance between sharpness to display size. And if you did want to compare that to the PPI on a 1080p, even on a smaller display around 24 inches, that would give you about a PPI of 92, which adds further to the fact that 1440p is becoming a better 1080p replacement. Through DisplayPort at least, playing competitive FPS games on here works like a charm, capping at a solid 240Hz with my RTX 4070 rig, and at this price point, at least you're no longer sacrificing resolution, viewing angles, or response times, as this one does get as low as one milliseconds. Resolution wise, assuming that your hardware can handle it well, there's simply no Debate here that 1440p will look better for both competitive and non-competitive gaming. FPS wise, the added detail will definitely pull ahead if you're trying to see enemies or any sort of in-game elements, and now the higher refresh rates at a more affordable price make that more accessible than ever. For anything else, honestly, 1440p can be considered your forever resolution as long as GPU prices remain so much higher than the actual displays, making 4K a little bit out of reach for a lot of people. You could simply land on 1440p and pretty much stay here as long as you need to. Likewise, with the latest generation of game consoles typically costing less than an entire GPU, 1440p displays mark an affordable way for people to enjoy both console gaming as well as PC gaming with a good amount of fidelity. And sure, while consoles typically cap out at 120 FPS, 1440p displays become even more affordable at a lower refresh rate. So even if you're not aiming for 240Hz like this monitor, there are a lot of other options that would be even more affordable. And sure, while budget lineups might not include NVIDIA or AMD branding, both types of adaptive sync work across different systems. With that, gaming on either my RTX rig with an NVIDIA GPU or my PlayStation 5 with an AMD GPU experience zero screen tearing or graphical issues. Now, for anybody stepping outside of gaming, 1440p for myself at least is typically the bare minimum I like to use when doing any sort of productive work, mainly due to the scaling on Windows and how text looks at a 109 pixel density, which I did mention before. From a media standpoint as well, while I personally don't really fuss about resolution when it comes to media, a 1440p video will naturally look better than 1080p. Now I will say with these lower price points, there are going to be some sacrifices to keep in mind. One namely is going to be frequently cutting costs with certain features. For this monitor at least, while there is an included stand, it only has tilt adjustments. You don't have much adjustability beyond that, which is why I personally opted to use a monitor arm, so that is something you might need to factor into your monitor budget. Likewise, it will be pretty rare that you see an HDMI 2.1 port on a budget 1440p display. 
These HDMI 2.0 ports will still give you 144Hz through HDMI on a PC or 120Hz on a console at 1440p. However, they won't give you those features like variable refresh rate you might want on a console. For most people, this isn't really a deal breaker, but just something to be mindful of. Now, one of the last things that comes with affordability is typically a lower peak brightness on certain displays. While this monitor does cite HDR400 and it is noticeable when activated, higher peak brightnesses around 600 nits as the lower threshold is typically needed for a better HDR experience. Now, I think the best way to sum all this up is the fact that there's just going to be less and less of a market for 1080p with displays like this at 1440p hitting the market. As monitors like this exist at such an affordable price point, low response times and pushing high refresh rates on the budget space, it's easy to see where things are going to be going in the future. The last thing really I'd like to think would be when or if GPU prices ever come down, it might actually be the nail in the coffin for 1080p outside certain wildly niche 1080p esports releases. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. If I were to think of the future when it comes to resolution, I do really think it's where 1440p is the new baseline. It's just a matter of which features you'd want attached to your display.